Welcome to the Promat Digital Experience. My name is Chris Tully with Plug Power, and I'm excited to talk to you today. Sorry we can't all be in Chicago enjoying ourselves, but this will have to do. What we're going to discuss today is sustainability and how your business can be sustainable in an affordable way. Or put it another way, can you afford not to do it? The world is shifting to electric power. On-road vehicles and electric vehicles are more prevalent. It seems every week an additional automaker is talking about their EV strategy and how they're going to move to an EV path down the line. That's been going on for decades in the material handling world. We've all been using electric material handling equipment for quite some time. And we do it simply because it has lower operating costs, lower maintenance costs, it really gives you a, perfor a performance enhancement over the industrial, the internal combustion engine, and it's really a lower total cost of ownership. The market may look at this as a way to get away from fossil fuels, but again, us in the material handling world, we've been doing this for quite some time. When it comes to high use vehicles, like material handling equipment, fuel cells are the superior source of energy for your electric vehicles. And there's a very good reason for that. If your material handling equipment is operating two or three shifts a day, five, six, or seven days a week, there really is no time to adequately charge and maintain your batteries. The advantage of fuel cells is that you have shorter fueling times. There's a lower environmental impact. You'll have higher productivity at your facility greater operating range, and of course, most importantly, the lower cost of ownership. So using fuel cells can help get you into a sustainability program for your material handling equipment and do it in an affordable way. If you compare fuel cells to diesel generators, for instance, in a stationary power application, you can see up to an 84% decrease in your operational costs. When it comes to material handling applications for your fork trucks or pallet jacks, you can actually see up to a 15% increase in your productivity versus batteries alone. When you couple all of that together into your business case, it makes a compelling case to use fuel cells. Hydrogen is projected to be the energy of the next decade. Using hydrogen for your hydrogen fuel cells can greatly reduce your carbon footprint. And hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cells have significant growth in the coming decades. This is true, especially as it relates to the use of green hydrogen. And by green hydrogen, I'm talking about hydrogen that has no carbon impact in its manufacturing. With green hydrogen, you take excess renewable energy or dedicated renewable energy and use an electrolyzer to create the hydrogen, reducing the carbon footprint. Furthermore, this hydrogen can be delivered to manufacturing and distribution centers or any end user using a fuel cell electric vehicle, again, reducing the carbon footprint. With the expansion of renewable energies, many times during the year, you'll see solar and wind arrays need to come offline simply because there is not the electric demand. Using this excess renewable energy to create green hydrogen is a terrific way to be able to lower the carbon impact. Now, as it relates to material handling, fuel cells fit into your distribution center or manufacturing facility in a very non-obtrusive way. Your fuel cell fits into your material handling equipment as a direct replacement to your existing batteries. The truck doesn't know the difference. It has the same uh, form, fit, and function as your batteries, the same weight and center of gravity to be certified by the uh, OEM. But the benefits we get with this is it eliminates any battery changing or charging. It increases your productivity by eliminating battery droop, and we'll talk more about that later. 
And it also can save you incredible floor space because we could eliminate battery rooms or areas for charging. So now that floor space can be reallocated for other revenue generating activities. This is especially important for existing buildings where there isn't any room for expansion. Using fuel cells can recover floor space and still help you meet your needs from a material handling standpoint. Fuel cells have been adopted by some of the biggest names we see in the industry today. Distribution centers and manufacturing centers facil facilities specifically benefit from fuel cells. Customers like Amazon, Walmart, Carrefour in the distribution field see the benefits of the increase in your productivity while auto manufacturers and other manufacturers see the benefits of eliminating floor space for charging and eliminating battery droop to increase the productivity. Many of these locations are in the United States or in North America, but the expansion into Europe and Asia is growing at a rapid pace. This is a fascinating statistic the first time I saw this. 30% of all food and groceries shipped in the US in 2020 were moved by fuel cells. You'll see this at companies like Amazon and Kroger and Wegmans and Cisco, as well as cold storage facilities like Freeze Pack. These companies recognize that you can move more groceries, more pallets, more picks per hour with fuel cells than they can using traditional batteries. What this means for them is they could move more with the same amount of equipment, or they can move the same amount with fewer pieces of equipment. All of that plays into the business case for fuel cells. Walmart was one of the first adopters of fuel cells. Their initial deployment was in Washington Courthouse, Ohio in 2008. Shortly after that, they became a large scale adopter. Right now, they are the largest user of fuel cells in the world. They have 37 sites. Their distribution centers use fuel cells in their class one, two, and three equipment, and they are continuing to expand. Today, they have over 10,000 fuel cells in operation, and that is growing. Another large user of fuel cells is Amazon. Amazon has very aggressive goals from a sustainability standpoint. They wanna be net carbon zero by 2040. And by 2030, they want 50% of their deliveries to be net carbon zero. Fuel cells are helping them reach those goals. However, Amazon doesn't do anything simply because it's sustainable. They do it because it saves them money and it makes them more productive. Today, Amazon has over 9,000 fuel cells in operation, and they have extremely aggressive goals to continue their expansion. By the end of 2021, they will be the single largest user of fuel cells in the world. And their expansion of fuel cells goes way beyond material handling. Amazon is looking at fuel cells for on-road applications as well. So as you look to be sustainable, and you compare your business case, they can be compatible as it has been for Amazon. I mentioned earlier that the automotive market and the automotive manufacturers have been big adopters of fuel cells as well. That's because just-in-time manufacturing does not allow for any downtime for battery changing or battery charging. The automotive manufacturers have been able to reduce their fleets because they don't have to have excess equipment for jumper trucks or excess equipment for a user to, to operate as they're waiting for their truck to charge. Primarily in North America, you'll see fuel cells in the manufacturing facilities of BMW, Chrysler, Honda, GM, Mercedes-Benz, but that's also expanding aggressively in Europe as well where many of those same companies are looking to deploy fuel cells 
throughout the European operations. Anytime there's high velocity, heavy duty usage, fuel cells work very well. How does it operate inside your distribution center or your manufacturing facility? That's a question I receive very frequently. Quite simply, your fuel cell is a direct replacement for your battery. Instead of charging your battery, you will simply refill your fuel tank in your fuel cell, just like you refill fuel inside your car at a gas station. And then your material handling equipment will run full speed. The operator is able to do the fueling itself. There's no additional training or PPE required. And fuelings take as little as one to three minutes. When you can compare the time associated with battery changing or battery charging, and you compare it to a very short fuel cell hydrogen fill time, that difference is where you can justify the investment in fuel cells. The short fill times and the saving of the unproductive time associated with battery changing or battery charging is only part of the story. The increase in productivity is often overlooked. When your traditional battery gets near the end of a shift, you'll notice that it operates more slowly. That's called battery droop. The decrease in voltage does not allow you to move as quickly as you can at the beginning of a shift. This is most illustrated when you're doing any heavy lifting or high lifting. With a fuel cell, your material handling equipment will run full speed, just as if you're putting gas in your car. At a quarter of a tank, your car will go just as fast as it will if you've got a full tank. That incremental benefit that you can see by having a constant lift speed and travel speed is how we can measure the increase in your productivity. It's often overlooked, but it's something that's very important to keep in mind with your return on investment analysis and your business case study. If you can quantify the increase in your productivity, then you'll be able to justify the increase or the investment in fuel cells to make sure that the business case works out. Where does my hydrogen come from? It's a question I often receive. In order for you to operate hydrogen fuel cells, you will install a hydrogen infrastructure outside your building where we will store hydrogen and then from there, it is pumped inside to your dispensers. This hydrogen infrastructure will take a pad the size of 50 by 60, for instance, and it'll include a large liquid tank to store hydrogen, as well as compression and storage equipment. We could also create hydrogen on site using an electrolyzer. And electrolysis simply takes electricity and water and it splits it into oxygen and hydrogen. This is very cost effective if there is low cost electricity, preferably alternative energy or renewable energy. You can determine which is the best method based on your business case. Regardless of what met, which method you choose, your hydrogen will be pumped into your building into a dispenser and the dispenser will act just like a gas pump at a gas station and your operators will simply fuel up their equipment. In a moment, I'll show you a video of just how easy it is to fill your equipment. How do we get from the pad to the dispensers? Very simply, we run our hydrogen lines underground over the along the side of the building and up along the roof. And then we drop it with a roof penetration directly down to your dispenser. So there's very little interference with any equipment in your facility. An infrastructure and dispensers like this can be installed during construction or very simply can be installed during operations in a way that is non-disruptive. As we talk about the sustainability of fuel cells, it always comes back to the business case and can I afford it? Very important to take into consideration all of the costs associated 
with fuel cells and compare them to the costs associated with using batteries, which is generally your current state. Fuel cells are more expensive. The energy to run them is more expensive. The maintenance is more expensive. But the justification is more than overcome with the savings from battery changing or charging, your increase in your productivity with your lift trucks, and most importantly, also the battery room floor space savings that you'll see. When you compare all of these together, I believe you'll agree that fuel cells for the right application are certainly the best choice. We typically see close to a million dollars in savings in a traditional distribution center with up to 200 pieces of equipment. I showed you slides earlier in pictures of what an infrastructure and a dispenser looks like. What I'd like to do now is actually show you a site. What we're looking at is a Walmart distribution center. And you can see the, the infrastructure in the corner of their parking lot. This is about a 50 by 60 foot area. And it can vary depending on exactly what your application is and the number of pieces of equipment that you have. From here, the hydrogen lines are run underground to the side of the building, along the roof, and then we drop straight down to our dispensers. Here you'll see an operator approaching a distribution or a dispenser to fill their equipment. No PPE is required. They simply stand on the pressure mat, connect the data cable, a dewatering line, and the hydrogen line. The dewatering line allows us to remove the deionized water that is created by the fuel cell. And that water can be used for floor scrubbers or any other application for deionized water, furthering your sustainability effort throughout your organization. After a very short fill, the operator then places the nozzle, the data cable, and the dewatering line, and they're back at work again. The business case is all based on the quick fill time and the increase in their productivity by eliminating droop, because now they're not waiting in line to change a battery, they're moving more equipment again. This is illustrated, and I should say it's amplified when you're in freezer applications as well, because cold storage applications are extremely challenging when it comes to any type of battery. As you can see, fuel cells are absolutely a sustainable source when it comes to choosing how you power your material handling equipment. It's also a very strong economic choice. It reduces the total cost of ownership versus batteries. It improves your reliability and increases your productivity. It allows for a more flexible business model because you don't have to add additional pieces of equipment when you're busy. You simply fuel your equipment more frequently and move more product. And it will certainly be a sustainable source of energy using green hydrogen, which can help further meet your sustainability goals as a company. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you Enjoy the rest of the ProMat experience, and I look forward to seeing everyone in person again soon. Thank you.